In this episode of Redefine, we talk with Tyler Stableford, one of the top adventure photographers in the world as ranked by Men's Journal Magazine and director of the award-winning film, The Fall Line. We met up in New York City to discuss some of his more hazardous experiences, such as photographing at extreme G-forces and shooting while on the bouncing floor of a coal mine nine stories underground. Special thanks to our sponsors, Adorama, the photography people, and T1 Line, the voice and data solution experts. Joining us today is Tyler Stapleford. Hi, Tamara. Hi, Tyler. All right, nice to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here in New York City. Yeah, it's great to be here. When, you, um, when you're doing these projects, do you kind of find that you stay on them and then move through, like the fighter pilots? Right. Yeah, yeah tell us a little about the fighter pilots. Yeah, the fighter pilots. That was an outstanding project. It was, it was, it was images. Uh, yeah, it was really uh. fun. Uh, and that was a, a piece that I... I pitched to 5280 Magazine in Denver. It's a it's a Denver regional magazine. It's been uh, just a really fun process. I got to fly in an F-16 for 90 minutes with five jets over the Rocky Mountains. That goes like and, 30, 40 miles an hour. Yeah, maybe 45. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What is it? What did you get up to? So I don't know in terms of the speed. Um, I definitely I definitely like? got rocked by the G-forces, and yeah. you can see that in the film on my website. My my pilot absolutely just nailed me with G-Force. It was a complete surprise. I was holding one camera completely loose in the cockpit. Um, it's a live cockpit, and so there's the ejection handle. If you pull that, we both go out, and who knows where the plane goes, and uh, the, everything moves, and this, that, and the other. So I had to have no straps on my camera. So I had two in an open bag by my hip, and then one holding loose. And, uh, and I figured that the pilot promised he would go easy on me since I had these cameras loose and they could cause a lot of damage flying around and doing this, and that, and the other. on your head. Yeah, and I had asked. We had to do a lot of upside-down maneuvers, which I wanted for photos. I had a very carefully kind of scripted, uh, you know, moves of what I wanted to do with us upside-down with four jets in formation below us and such, and, you know, us, us in the foreground, however we could do that. Um, and he said, fine, we'll take it easy. We'll do everything, you know, we need to do, but we won't go too hard. And just kind of like a NASCAR driver, I mean, two seconds into takeoff, he just nailed me, and we hit a, almost eight G forces, which is you know quite quite uncomfortable in its own way, and I, I almost blacked out. And so you're up in the air, but you're also like super low in the ground, coal miner. Yeah, so I've worked. At, I was a mountaineer and a and a rock climber uh, long before I was a photographer. Right. And and you know, I apply that that principles of those aesthetics to to our photography and our cinematography a lot, in the sense that. You can only put so much gear in your backpack before you're weighed down and you fail to make the summit. And so that's kind of the, the aesthetic I apply to our, you know, our heavy industry photography. So, I've, so I've, you pack very I've, lightly. So I've spent about eight or nine days uh, deep underground with, with coal miners in western Colorado, about 2,000 to 2,500 feet underground in you tunnels that are four miles long. No, a lot, and a lot, of times, a lot of times we're working uh, just with Canon speed lights and we have a, uh, a new behind the scenes video on, on our, our website that just launched this week. Uh, on a commercial shoot we did for Timberland work boots in, in, a, in a coal mine. Yeah. And it shows us working with, uh, we brought oh, six speed lights and we used three at a time, three or four at a time to light them simply because they're the best, you know, the best tools for the job for working quickly in an active mine where stuff has to get hauled out in two seconds before some equipment comes in or things right. have to move. And, did you feel claustrophobic? Um, it definitely, it wasn't the claustrophobic that, that was scared me as much so much as um, the the reverberations. Coal is formed by incredible heat and pressure over the years, and so that pressure is still very much there. So as they mine, there's great settling in what's called bouncing, where the floor comes up a bit. It's not so much the ceiling, you know, in, in danger of collapsing, but the floor and the incredible pressure uh, pushing up. And so that it's causes like things to pop from the walls. Coal can pop out from the walls and things. Uh, yeah, it's very much a uh, a living, active beast in there. So wow. it's, it's yeah, it's disconcerting. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, my ground's not supposed to move like this. Yes, 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 it's not. Yeah. And how long were you in there? Um, I've spent a total of, uh, I think it's nine, nine days or so nine underground. Days. Yeah. Yeah, over various projects. Uh, five of them first for a couple of editorial projects and then most recently for some commercial projects as yeah. well. So it's been, it's been exciting. I, I always look forward to going back. Fall line. Yes. Yeah, okay, that's thanks. playing in festivals everywhere. What, yes, how did that it's, originate? It's, it's had a wonderful tour uh, with a number of film festivals around the world. It's touring with the Banff Mountain Film Festival World Tour, uh, Telluride Mountain it's Film. It's place up there. Yes, it is. Yeah, <laughs> no, it was a wonderful trip up there uh, yeah. last, last, last year. And, um, and a number of other film festivals have been fortunate to win uh, a number of awards and such. So it's a 13-minute it's a piece on a wounded warrior named Heath Calhoun who's a 101st Airborne uh, Army Ranger. He's a cinematographer now. Yeah. How, how yeah. do you most identify yourself now? 
Uh, that's not a the great question. Not that you need to, but <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm not sure. Um, that's a funny question. Uh, if I think about it too deeply, um, it, it definitely in our brandings as a as a business, uh, we we definitely you know brand our company as as being able to produce world class level uh, stills and and video. And right. so as a former journalist and photojournalist and magazine editor. Um, I've spent you know, most of a decade before becoming a full-time photographer honing and crafting a sense of story. And so that's been very important. It's fun to return to that after shooting just stills for a while to come back to my journalistic roots and tell stories you know, with visuals, with with words. audio, <laughs> yeah, words, voiceovers, yeah. and, and the, the moving images themselves. So that's been yeah. really fun. Yeah, so it's, it's a great return. I, would, I could say in some ways I was plateauing in a sense with stills photography and that my learning curve was slowing down yeah. and then now moving to cinematography with all there is to, to learn I feel like I'm on the one of the steepest learning curves of, of my entire life right and, and that's fun you know, yeah. in my mid-30s to be doing that and that's the thing when you start getting into cinematography you realize like audio is like a whole new beast yes audio is a whole new beast yes, yes. as uh, you can hear the sounds music, behind us yes <laughs> which we couldn't control yes which we can't control yeah it's new york it's okay yeah it's yeah. supposed to be a little it's bustling hustling, bustling. It's bustling. Yes. we're actually right. piping that in that's room tone that we're adding yeah yeah um but the, so in yeah. terms of that steep learning curve it's not just now telling story but it's visual framing which you're already doing but it's yeah. narrative and it's connecting audio and it's scoring and it's everything and yeah. and that's a challenge and, and exciting it's a challenge and it's so much more of a collaborative process i've found than shooting stills in the sense that i lean heavily heavily on a you know my, my video editor dave ruck is, is a person in denver I, I work closely with and he's incredibly talented you know he's about 40 years old he spent the last 25 years of his life pretty much every day living in moving images and storytelling and such and so he brings just a huge wealth of knowledge and experience uh, yeah. to our storytelling capabilities that I don't that I don't have. Your photographs of Ethiopia, we have this in common. Yes. We both have adopted children from Ethiopia. Yeah, yeah. Um, tell, us, learn. tell us about that experience photographing in Ethiopia. Sure. Um, this was a really meaningful project in my life before uh, before my wife and I traveled to Ethiopia to adopt our, our son Sam. This was a few years ago. Uh, we were really connected to our the agency that we were adopting from called Wide Horizons for Children. And, yes. the, and the reason we, we chose to adopt through them was, was because they have a very large humanitarian aid program. It's non-denominational and they're deeply committed to keeping orphan children in their home communities. So I decided to shoot a documentary. This was the, pretty much the same week that the 5D Mark II came out. So I bought two cameras retail. I couldn't get them from Canon um, on that short notice and went and shot for, for a week um, about the you know, humanitarian aid work that they're doing there. Right. Uh, and that was just a tremendous experience for me. It was my first time working with the 5D camera as, you know, as a full-fledged documentary right. shoot. I had worked with the 5D a couple of months before doing some promos for Canon, so I had mm -hmm. an idea of the power of the camera. I consider volunteering to be a, a very selfish pursuit, and it sh I think it should be, um, because that's where it's most sustainable, and not say, oh, boy, I feel like I should you know, volunteer today with my camera or whatever. But I thought about what I can do most as, a, you know, as an individual, um, and I'm, I'm better you know, not ladling soup into a bowl or digging a, digging a ditch. Um, I'm most valuable with a camera in my hand, you know? right. so I can help raise a lot of money that way. That's what I do for a living is, is shoot more or less marketing photos. So, um, so I said, great, I'll, I can volunteer some of my time to, to do some fundraiser documentary styles for, for various nonprofits. And I, I'll say, honestly, Tamara, they're the most meaningful and fun projects that we do all year. It just connects us to stories and to people that I don't normally get connected to when I'm shooting a you know, marketing campaign for a clothing company or something like right, that. So it's, right. it's a real, real fun for us. So very selfishly, it's one of the best things that we ever do. Because you get to meet really cool people. You get to, meet you get cool to people. feel good. You get to feel you good. You use your talent get to, to use inspire our, our people talents, to take action. And we get to experiment with our talents because yeah. um, we can make mistakes and experiment when um, you know no one's paying us a lot of money to yeah. do exactly what they want. <laughs> and so that's that's yeah. a really fun time. It's a time for us to you know figure out new technology or for my two assistants to come in and step in as you know first camera and experiment with stuff. And uh, so that's it's a really fun time that way. Yeah. And, and it, yeah, we, we produce, we, we do produce some portfolio work out of it as well. We get to right. say this is something that we really want to try to go for. So, um, so I mean that not just in giving back, but uh, you know, selfishly and professionally, it's a great thing. And that's why I encourage other people to, to do it. I think you'll right. find that, particularly for those starting out in the business, they say, well, I need some new. How do I get some great stories? I'm getting into DSLR video, right? right? Well, I need a story, and you do for DSLR video if you want your piece to stand out. Well, yes. 
connect with a nonprofit. Every single one has a pretty darn compelling story to share. And usually share. a crap budget. Yes, and usually a crap budget, and yeah. they'll probably be happy for you to yeah. bring your vision and whatever it is in. Exactly. That way, so. Well, tell everybody where we can find out more, especially on your website exactly, to see the clips and oh, sure, yeah. Twitter, Facebook. Yes, yeah, my website is tylerstableford.com. Uh, just this week, we launched a, a, a brand new, supersized, improved site. We have a whole a host of videos and stills on there. We have a blog, it's tylerstableford.com slash blog that has a you know range of information, has uh, downloads on some of my oh, Photoshop and Lightroom workflows, some of my workflows with the Canon 5D cameras and such. Awesome. And, uh, and also a link to a number of the workshops that I'm, that I'm teaching for Canon and Adobe around the country. And, Perfect. Uh, actually around the world, we'll be going to Southeast Asia for a number of tours for, for Canon as well oh, this where? year. So, oh, that would be Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, and one other that I can't remember, yes. India? Uh, not India, yes. <laughs> Nepal. <laughs> yes. I'll, sure. It'll come to me in yeah. place, yes. <laughs> we'll edit it in. <laughs> yes. <We're> like, <laughs> it's like, uh, Laos. Yes. <laughs> I couldn't think of a country for a second. Yeah. Um, and then on Twitter, it's Tyler Stapleford. Yes, thank you. And yeah. Facebook, same thing? Yes. Okay, yeah, perfect. Tyler Stapleford Photography on, on Facebook. Okay, yes. good. Yeah, thank you great. very much. Cameron, thank you very much appreciate for your time. It. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Keep giving. Looking forward to seeing your next set of adventures, Tyler. Join us next time while we sit down with the controversial Scott Bourne in his Las Vegas studio. While you're waiting for that though, load up your gear and hit the outdoors with your Click Elite Volt backpack. This rugged pack is specifically designed for long backcountry treks. It's easy to carry and has tons of storage features. And leave your tripod at home. You can mount a camera, a light, even an umbrella to the metal handle. You can buy the Volt at Adorama.com. Special thanks to our sponsors Adorama, the photography people, and T1Line, the voice and data solution experts.